sat home. Um, okay, this is not my speech. This is my speech here. <clears throat> Valerie Wallace just made a very important notice that, uh, that this thing, the podium here, is too far away from the bar, she said. <laughs> She's a very perceptive director of FFB research there. So, um, uh, I just got 10 minutes. What I want to talk about is um, one question with a three-point sermon from my Methodist church days. Uh, so, <clears throat> the question is, is funding research important? So this is, I'm a scientist, so obviously this is a bit like asking, is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> or do Scotsmen like beer? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so really, there's, this is an important question, because there's actually a whole bunch of urban myths out there about research and researchers and science and stuff, and you, you may have heard some of these, so just provide you, you obviously all support research, and you're wonderful in that way, but you might need some ammunition. So. Um, one of the urban myths that, uh, that um, we need to dispel is, actually mostly I hear it in cancer research, because I actually study cancer of the retina uh, quite heavily. I study retinal development and cancer and stuff like that. Um, and the thing that I hear a lot in pubs and, and discussion and, and friends and stuff, they say um, <clears throat> that we're hiding the cure for cancer. <laughs> right? That's what I hear. I'm sure you've probably heard this, but scientists are hiding the cure for cancer because, you know, we need to get funding, and if we cure cancer, where are we going to get our funding from? So, I mean, apart from the fact that why would I be here, I'd be on my yacht in the Mediterranean if I'd cured cancer. The thing is that, if you think about it for a second, scientists get cancer. Scientists' spouses die of cancer. Scientists get blindness. Scientists get all the diseases that you guys care about, and why on earth wouldn't they be just as desperate to cure those horrible things like blindness and multiple sclerosis and Huntington's disease and ALS and all the rest of it that we all work on, so desperately trying to find cures. We are just as keen as you are, obviously, to find these, because we have loved ones and friends and family that get these things too, so that's a load of rubbish, right? Right off the bat. Um, another question I often get is, you know, so Rod, um, you know, how come we can send a man to the moon, but we can't cure X. We can't cure blindness or cancer or whatever, right? So that's the other question I get. Well, the answer to that one is that sending a man to the moon is really, really easy. All you need, all you need is, a, is a tin can, some fuel, and about a billion dollars, and a bunch of idiots in hats that'll go there, right? That's really all you need. And some high school mathematics is about all you need to send a man to the moon. It's way more complicated to figure out retinitis pigmentosa or cancer, or multiple sclerosis, all these chronic diseases that are so complicated. It's hellishly complicated, because biology, biology is freaking complicated. <laughs> it really is. I want to put another F word in there, because I really feel this, you know? But Valerie Wallace might kick me out, right? <laughs> now, what the hell, I'm going to say it. Science is fantastically complicated, <laughs> right? It really is very, very complicated. So if you imagine, if you think about a cell, you're, in your body just now, you've got trillions and trillions of cells all talking to each other, and you've also got thousands and thousands of genes inside each cell all talking to each other, and everybody's talking to each other, and they're producing thousands and thousands of proteins, all forming hundreds and thousands of complexes all talking. It's very horrendously complicated. If you think about an analogy for this is like, uh, you know when you're on an airplane and you look at one of those um, air kind of route maps, and you see like, you know, Pearson connected to Heathrow, connected to uh, whatever, you know, uh, on and on and on. And it looks pretty complicated, but you, know, you draw all those red lines, right? When you're bored in the airplane, you're looking at that. Imagine that a billion times more. Lots of hubs with lots of connections. The network diagram for inside a cell, a single cell, is awful. It's really horrendously complicated. So biology, that's the second point, that biology is really complicated. And therefore, we need science to figure out what's going on. Um, so, you know, if your TV is broken, what are you going to do? You've got two choices, right? You can either bang it in the head and hope for the best, which is what a lot of these um, goons on TV are doing. Like, what, who's that idiot, um, that evangelist guy with the white suit? Benny Hinn, you know him? <laughs> the faith healer guy. He's out there. These guys are pretty funny, but they're also kind of tragic too, right? Because they're preying on people's needs. People are desperate for cures, you know? So Benny Hinn's out there saying, oh, you know, Give me your money and I'll faith heal you, blah, blah, blah. Well, where's the science in that? Where's the logic in that? Where's the, that's like banging the TV on the head, right? So you've got to figure out the mechanism of what's wrong with the TV to fix it. I'm going to take my TV to the guy who knows how to fix it. 
That's what I'm going to do. And the guys who know how to fix blindness and cancer are the scientists. They're, that's that's really the major, major only logical hope for the disease. So we've got to keep funding science uh, to get to, to get to the answers of these complicated questions. Um, and a third, a third common mis uh, misconception is that I hear often is you know we've spent all this money on research. I get this a lot in cancer and blindness. I'm sure get the same thing. You know, we've spent all this money on research and we still don't have a cure. What's going on? And First of all, um, if I go back to the second point, that it's really, really complicated. And second, that we have made incredible progress. And just because we don't have a cure doesn't mean there hasn't been incredible progress. Because understanding these things is hellish. It really is awfully complicated. But if I look back 30 years ago when I was a PhD student to now, it's like night and day. It's unbelievable. But even so, I can still recognize that we are just touching. We're just touching the the top of the iceberg, the absolute, because there's just all this incredible complexity under there. And so you need scientists to figure this out. And they are figuring it out. It's just that it takes a lot longer than people want. They want the Benny Hens to come along and say, bing, you're cured, you know, magically, give me your $50 and you're cured. It's not going to happen. It's got to, you've got to be patient. And science is the way forward. It really is. Just look, look, in, look at history. Science is the way We used to put leeches on people, for God's sake, to cure them, you know? <laughs> Ah, you know, I've got a sore head, bring out the leeches. You know, I've got a sore bum, bring out the leeches. My wife's a pain in the neck, bring out the leeches, you know. <laughs> What's that all about? I mean, science is the only way to do this properly and mechanistically and really figure out the wiring diagram. So anyway, that's my three points. Um, one, where the hell's my summary here? One is that scientists are just like you. We want cures as well. We've got loved ones that, that get these diseases. Second, biology is really, really complicated. Far more than even I can begin to understand. It's really very complicated. And third, that research is the only logical way forward to cure these, uh, these problems. And so what should you do? What should you, what should you support? So two points here. One is um, support excellent science. Support, don't listen to people who say, oh, we should spread the money evenly, or we should do it regionally, or rubbish like that. Fund brilliant science. Fund the best. Don't compromise. How do you do that? How do you do that as a donor? You do it already. You give money to organizations like FFB. And FFB do things like peer review. Now, what's peer review? There's a bunch of brilliant scientists in the room who tomorrow are going to sit and, and examine a whole bunch of applications to decide to rank scientists and to fund a few grants from many and say these are the best ones. And, so, and scientists are extremely critical, very, very critical. You'll never meet a, a more negative bunch than a bunch of scientists. <laughs> They're so pessimistic. They look in the dark side all the time. Well, you forgot about that. Oh, well, what about all this good stuff? Shut up. What about that over there? Honestly, they're terrible. We're trained that way. We're trained to be utterly critical. And that's what will happen tomorrow. They'll sit in the room tomorrow and they'll go, well, that's terrible. You missed that. I like this part, but this is really awful. And we'll sit and go over that for half an hour, you know. And, and then they'll rank them. And the best ones will get funded. And your dollars will go to the best scientists. That's the only way you can guarantee getting good, um, good, good, good value for your money. So don't listen to anything else. Peer review is the answer. And donate to organizations like FFB that go through that. So um, I want to finish with a stupid uh, story from my own life. Um, the other day, I said to my wife, um, in, a, in a stupid, vulnerable moment, I said to my wife, uh, you know, babe, why do you love me? What a, what, what a pathetic, what, I mean, really, how, how low can you go? Why do you love me, baby? My wife, you know, she's right smart. She says to me, because I make you a better person. What the hell? I fell right into that, you know? <laughs> so, you know, my wife is like science. It's complicated, and it can be devious, but damn, you need it. <laughs> right. Thank you.